Hello, and welcome to another episode of The Pulse. I'm your host, Sam Red. Today we have a wonderful show lined up for you, so don't go away. We'll have a lot more coming up on The Pulse. Have you ever felt like when you're walking down the streets of Baltimore that you had an angel watching over your shoulder? Well, that's definitely the case with Baltimore City's City Watch program. And joining me today is Lieutenant Sam Hood of the City Watch program with Baltimore City Police Department. Welcome to the show. Thank you. So, Lieutenant, tell me what is the Baltimore City City Watch? City Watch program is closed circuit TV surveillance cameras throughout the city of Baltimore identified with in contingence with the ComStat program that was established several years ago with the police department. This way we know where and when to watch where the emergency crime has uh, increased. Mm -hmm. This way we have that public servants and we've increased our response time for that uh, safety. Okay, so as we ride through the streets we see the, uh, the cameras on the poles and we see the blue lights flashing. Um, these are the City Watch cameras. Um, so, how did this come about? Uh, in 2005, Governor O'Malley, Mer then Mayor O'Malley, uh, went to Westminster in London and saw this in an innovative, cost effective measure to increase public safety in our public spaces. Uh, so, he brought that program to Baltimore mm -hmm. and we started with 50 cameras in the downtown area. As I said earlier, we used the ComStat principles. We identified areas of the city had historical crime. Right and we went to the east side, the west side, and the northwest up in the Park Heights regions. So that's where it originated. Now you said you started out with 50 cameras. How many cameras do you have now? Over 542 cameras today. And, and those cameras are watched how, uh, by you all where and I mean and how often are they watched? Are they live or are they? They are live and they're watched uh, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Now those cameras record for 28 days. Right. We identify with the ComStat principle which ones we need to watch, actively watch live, and we use retired police officers to watch those cameras. The other cameras are still recording, but they're on a pre-programmed tour. Mm -hmm. This way, all of the cameras are actively being monitored. It's just not live. We can do reactive instead of proactive. Okay, so there's a, a crime taking place in the city, and uh, police are called or not called. Uh, you have people who are actually watching these crimes as they're taking place and you all monitor with communications or? The camera monitors in City Watch, they have a direct line radios with mm -hmm. the police officers and they get the call at the same time they're dispatched to police. Right. At the same time, we'll enter that address and see if we have a camera in that location, which they'll pull that camera up and then they'll rewind it a few moments mm -hmm. and see if they know if the call is valid if the information is accurate. And so they can aid that officer by the time they arrive. They have all of uh, the information they need to assess the situation properly. And how effective are these cameras in Baltimore City? We've reduced crime where there's cameras 25%, and that was reported in the Urban Institute report. And, and are these cameras being uh, used to, to solve what types of crimes? All crimes that we can identify and address. Mm -hmm. We have person crime, but also property crime. Mm -hmm. uh, now these crimes that we're identifying, first of all, we're starting with you know, any violent crime. Mm -hmm. But that, it's a very public street mm -hmm. until the incident occurs. You don't know till that moment. So we have to watch those areas closely where we keep getting calls for service for police response. Now these crimes, uh, these cameras use uh, in court cases for a homicide or a robbery? Tell me how they use with the, with the state's attorney's office or the police department. Yes, that's correct. The state's attorney's office, uh, we've worked out all of the chain of custody issues mm -hmm. that they've actually been able validity on their own merit and they've used them in court even because we can actually get the victim who might not want to press charges against the suspect. We've been able to use the camera itself to what has transpired in the incident and have a successful prosecution. Now I know that there are other areas, uh, other agencies that have cameras such as uh, MTA police and light rail or Johns Hopkins has them around the, uh, 
the hospital campus. Uh, are you, do you work closely with those other agencies also? We do, and that's the biggest part of success for City Watch. Uh, it's all our partnerships, our collaboration between the state and local entities and private enterprises, like you said, John Hopkins. Mm -hmm. uh, we're constant in contact, utilizing. So it's not just where you have a siloed camera system, but you're actually on one common operating picture. We're sharing information in real time. So they understand the totality of the incident they're dealing with. So are you saying that the, the, the city watch something like the camera system, this is a, a thing of the future and present day of fighting crime in, in the cities? Absolutely. I, I firmly believe that this is, you're revolutionizing the way public safety is perceived and that service is met. And our city officials have been able to identify that and they've uh, fully supported where this is going for public safety. Mm. And, and I, I know I've heard the police commissioner talk about the uh, Pocket Cop, how does that work with the, with the camera system also? The Pocket Cop, not only do we have the camera system so we can see where the crime has occurred, in the same moment, we know the GPS location of the police officer. So we can send down a snapshot at the moment of a crime, a person that has a gun in an area. We can take that snapshot and send that because we have the GPS for Pocket Cop from Commissioner Biefeld. We can send that to them in real time. So they're not stopping an innocent uh, citizen for officer safety, also for the safety of the citizens, they know exactly whom they're dealing with because they see an accurate picture, not a description over the radio, which we've relied on for okay. a long time. Now, is there a plan to have more cameras in the city? Yes. We've actually, uh, we've worked with local communities mm -hmm. and neighborhoods. We're actually working because of the fiscal responsibilities from the city government and Homeland Security. Mm -hmm. We're now putting the backbone in the fiber and then working with the community associations to identify where their priorities are, which is an objective of the mayor. Now, now are there communities that don't have cameras that have cameras in their future plans? If they've requested a camera, we have to reevaluate, prioritize, right. and then see how we can aid them and find financial resources for them. Mm -hmm. And our partnerships, as you described earlier, uh, state or uh, private enter entities have supported us in aiding them to get a camera. Now, what about if the community wanted to purchase their own cameras? Are there communities that have done such? They, well, it, yes, they are working on that now. They're actually originally. They had their own siloed camera project. Mm -hmm. The cost of monitoring is increasing all the time. So by being part of City Watch, we actually get to monitor their camera, but they put in the infrastructure first, mm -hmm. and then they have access to their camera, and when they're not able to monitor, we can add, aid in that and continue to monitor that camera for them. We're gonna take a short break. When we come back, I wanna talk about things like the Grand Prix and big city events and how the cameras are utilized in those particular events. Don't go away. When we come back, we'll be more doing more with Lieutenant Hood. Welcome back to The Pulse. I'm your host, Sam Red. With me today is Lieutenant Sam Hood of the Baltimore City Police Department's City Watch Program. So, when we left, we were talking about the uh, big events that take place in the city and how people are protected and, and watched over uh, while something like that is going on. One case uh, or event in particular is the, was the Grand Prix. Um, so tell me, uh, how did you all watch so much going on with the, uh, the Grand Prix and events like that? For the Grand Prix, being the inaugural uh, race, mm -hmm. also we were able to utilize a system where we could put everybody on one network mm -hmm. and that everybody meaning okay and that was the state state police mm -hmm. we had the MTA the Maryland Stadium Authority Department of Transportation right. the Emergency Operations Center and we also had uh, Baltimore City City Watch cameras and you also had a couple FBI cameras in okay. there to watch because we are Harbor Town right we had uh, EPA issues and we also had six tanker trucks full of fuel which could be a threat to right. the population. So we used FBI analytic cameras to watch those at all times. So you watch also events like the football, and we got the playoffs coming. Yes. You watch events like the football games and the playoffs and baseball and, and the fireworks and things like that also? Yes, externally. Uh, 
Major League Baseball mm -hmm. and for the NFL, they have their cameras inside for their event. But we're watching the infrastructure and also okay. the traffic outside. Okay, but you definitely partner with all those agencies also. We, we do, also. We, we, all the time we're communicating with them. Almost uh, quarterly, we're communicating with every event coming up. Okay, when I was at your office last week, I saw something that was really um, impressive to me where uh, a citizen was being attacked by someone and um, no one had to call the police because you all were right there. And that's what I mean by that guardian angel. Uh, tell right. me about that. Well, if before, if you needed pu police service, you right. had to pick up the phone and call the police, and then you had to wait for their arrival. Right. All right. With the City Watch program, because we're watching areas where we're seeing emergency, uh, emergent calls for service, mm -hmm. we're constantly watching where the suspect may be. Now, we identify a camera monitor for a geographical grid. Now, if there's nobody there as a suspect, they're going to watch the guardian angel. They're going right. to watch the citizen. Downtown at the Inner Harbor, we want to watch someone's on their cell phone. They're setting up dinner plans. Mm -hmm. They've been at Joseph A. Bank. They got their bogged down with bags. Right. They're losing their ability to protect themselves. Right. And City Watch is able to provide that extra sense of security, a guardian angel, because we're watching them to make sure no one... Uh, you know, impedes their, their event without, you know, safety. So in 2007, we had a lady who was walking home late at night. Uh, of course, the technology wasn't as robust as it is right. today. But we were able to, in the moment she was walking home at night, we were able to see a suspect try to incapacitate her and sexually assault her mm -hmm. before, and she couldn't call anybody, right. before that individual could violate her and uh, for that offense. We had police already on the scene and, and captured that individual. That's a sense of ser public service I think right. we've all been trying to achieve. Absolutely, and, and not only that, it throws the bad guy off because he doesn't know now uh, where does this come from. He's late at night, he's trying to assault someone, and all of a sudden the good guys are there to protect this lady. So, so the guardian angels are also protecting, and you all are watching over the citizens, but you're also protecting your own officers while they're out on the street, and, and how does that come into play? When you have someone for liability, for safety, also, and we can use the film for debriefing. Mm -hmm. After you have an event, like everybody, mm -hmm. you actually go through it again and make sure they use the procedure as we've outlined it from the police right. commissioner on down, that is this the best tactics mm -hmm. and how can we prove upon that for our service and our ability. And we can use the tape to debrief it, break it down section by section, what would be a better way how to respond for this call and who should have been included. Mm -hmm. That helps a lot when we're using that. Uh, I showed you a, a video clip of our uh, felony car stop right. where there was an accusation of excessive force and it was textbook. Right. Now what about uh, also with a, uh, you all being able to spot a weapon on a suspect or a person committing a crime before the officers get there? When we get a call, it's, and it's our community and our mm -hmm. residents, and we appreciate that much because we've always used them as our first right. alert system. Right. And that partnership, they'll call and say someone has a handgun. Well, before the officer gets there, we have retired police officers who watch the cameras. Mm -hmm. Those, uh, they know the characteristics of an armed person. They also know where a person would usually carry that gun in their hand, a check, a gun check. They can see that, and it might be a sleight of hand to the you know, novice eye without mm -hmm. the untrained eye, they would never see that difference where they're checking their gun two right. or three times. We're able to tell them where the gun is and if they've tried to hit, hide it before the police got there, exactly where the gun is. Okay. And you've seen several clips of that. Yeah, I saw a couple of clips of that. Now, now tell me, um, for the bad guys that are watching, um, police officer gets a phone call uh, or a call that there's a, a crime taking place. And this guy in most cases takes off and bolts and runs. Um, tell me what the cameras do in that case. In a situation where they, they might as well give up because we have cameras downtown and we have them set up geographically in a grid. Mm -hmm. So it, it doesn't matter if you think you're gonna run and hide inside a, a convenience store, a corner right. store or somewhere else. Right. We know where you're at in your last location. Right. And if you keep running from block to block, three, four blocks, the camera's waiting for you. We're, we're gonna be right with you every step. And when the officer gets there, we will even direct them which way to approach so right. that they're not observed before that, so that suspect doesn't even know where it's coming from. Yeah, I think there was one where a guy tried to alter his appearance 
Yes, they change their just right, change their clothing, else. secrete themselves, and even hid the weapon in a parking garage. And we were able to put yeah. that all together before they arrived. I'm really, I'm sure that fooled him when he got there. Uh, yes. So tell me, how powerful are these cameras? The cameras they can go up to two city blocks in ideal conditions. Mm -hmm. Now. We're all guided by our general order. Right. The general order, it's always in public spaces. Right. You can never go in through a window or any of that because that's in violation of our sacred trust that we, we're responsible for. Those, a block and a half, uh, a b city block or a block and a half to two blocks uh, are ideal. We can zoom in right and you can see exactly. Now when we're dealing with a police officer and we're talking to them, say it's a drug transaction, they know exactly which hand the drug is in and how many jail caps or the drug that they're suspected of having. So that helps also for the officer, for officer safety, right. what they're doing with, and also the citizens on the street because they know whom, where, and then now they know what they're doing with. Okay. One thing I noticed about the cameras, some of the cameras uh, flash blue lights and some don't. What's the difference in the two? Over a period of time, the, the first generation, we had the pods. And remember the big, big, big ones out there. Right, and it yeah. was uh, a DV, DVR. You had right. to go up and retrieve it. And the, the lights were a deterrent to let people know that we're being watched because we did not want to remember that public safety and trust. Right. We wanted to say, here it is. We're telling you right now we're watching this area and you have our trust. Mm -hmm. Over a period of time, uh, the camera, the blue light has got smaller, but some communities, they like the blue light, some don't. And I think everybody has accepted us because we're still getting calls every day for more cameras. Okay. Don't go away. When we come back, we'll have more on the poll. Welcome back to the polls. Uh, when we left, we were talking about the Baltimore City City Watch program. With me is Lieutenant Sam Hood. So when we left and took a break, we were talking about just how important it is to have people who have had careers in law enforcement or no law enforcement to be watching those cameras. It's essential. Uh, their background, knowing the communication directly with the police officer, mm -hmm. knowing what the elements of a crime are, also the probable cause and reasonable suspicious, and knowing the difference so that they can know the tactics, the dialogue that the officers responded to the call, mm -hmm. and knowing where they should, the officer should be approaching from. And that keeps the, pup, the officer safe, which means you don't have any use of force because with officers, it's only surprises when you have a use of force. And that keeps the, the public safer okay. when we, we go in with knowledge. Okay. I'll tell you, this whole, this whole City Watch program is just fascinating to me, and it makes me feel more secure as a citizen knowing that you all are watching us like you are out on the street. Is there anything you want to tell our viewing audience that we haven't gone over yet that, uh, that you might want to highlight? Absolutely. Uh, this is, uh, I mean, you can see a big shift in how we do policing and public safety. Sure. And we support the public. The public supports us and the communities. The communities are very vital to making the success of City Watch. Right. Uh, in addition, you're going to see applications. This is just the baseline. You're mm -hmm. going to see license plate readers. You're going to see into computer-aided dispatch. The camera monitors will get them at the same time the dispatcher does mm -hmm. so that by the time the officer arrives, they already have the information. They're not waiting for the dispatcher to call out the call, and the, that way there's no lag time for that public service, which we saw with the, the female in 2007. Sure. It's vital, someone's sure. personal safety. Sure. Then you also have gunshot detection. Gunshot detection will alert us when the Good Samaritan isn't able to call, mm -hmm. we're able to turn that camera immediately to where that detection came from. And we're working on uh, these applications as we speak. Well, tell me a little bit more about gunshot detection. What is that? Is it it's an sound? acoustic application okay. using uh, several different antennas trying to triangulate where that sound came from. Now, it has a lot of merit. We, we, we're, we have a few up in the city now. Mm -hmm. uh, with all technology, it starts in beta, and you want to see that it has merit, but what is the full functionality of it before mm -hmm. we purchase it? So that's where we're at. We're in the dem demonstration phase right now, and they have to prove it because we owe uh, a fiscal responsibility to the citizens of Baltimore to make sure we're purchasing something that does exactly as they ask. Okay. Lieutenant Hood, I've been very impressed with your knowledge of this system. Where's your training come from? 
Uh, over the 16 years I've been with Baltimore Police Department, I used to be the acting director of planning and research. Mm -hmm. So for ComStat, we know the where and the when. Mm -hmm. Now with City Watch, we know the who. Mm -hmm. With that information in time and distance of any investigation, we're able to put this together. And just the background of knowing the city as I have, I've been the Inner Harbor Commander, uh, the Midnight Commander in the Eastern, mm -hmm. uh, and started my career in the Southeast. Uh, that's given me, I hopefully, a well knowledge so I can right. protect the citizens of Baltimore. Well, I tell you, uh, I've been uh, thrilled that you were able to come here today and talk about uh, City Watch. Uh, I want to thank you for the tour you gave me, and also when you go back, um, thank the men and women of your department for the great work they're doing for the citizens of Baltimore. Uh, you guys are definitely heroes in my uh, opinion, uh, and that the citizens need to know that we have good people like you and your crew in the Baltimore City Police Department that are watching us and making us feel a lot more safer in Baltimore City. Thank you for the great job you're doing. Thank you. And maybe you'll come back some more. We'll talk about some more stuff that's going on when you come up with new technology. All right. All thank right. you. Great. Don't go away. When we come back, we'll have more on The Pulse. I want to thank all my guests for coming on the show today, and I hope some kind of way their information will help you stay safe in and around your community. And as always in parting, stay safe, stay informed, and keep your finger on the pulse of our community.